The Gentleman movie starts off with a bang. Matthew McConaughey plays an American living in London and walks straight into a British pub dressed in a striking sports coat. It's a Guy Ritchie movie, so of course it's going to move fast and furiously. There will be plenty of action, snappy dialogue, but also fine clothing. Oh, and some tacky as hell ones too. This is the most hideous costume Colin Farrell has ever worn, including the Penguin. And there will be a lot of tweed, and I'll give you a little talked about tip on tweed near the end of the video. But we'll concentrate on the gentleman gangsters rather than the gangster gangsters. You know what I mean. Welcome back to For the Love of Suits, where we try to find inspiration for how to dress well from the best dressed men on the screen. Matthew McConaughey is dressed in a purple check tweed sports coat with a purple shirt to match the main colour of the jacket and a pair of blue jeans which picks up on the blue in the check. The colour of the jacket goes well with Matthew's hair and whenever picking clothes it's often a good idea to take your own colouring into consideration. Not always the case. Wearing a daring colour in a loud check as a sports coat rather than a full suit allows you to express yourself sartorially without screaming, look at me. It also allows you to have fun, but not dress like a clown. This is one of the main functions of the sports coat or jacket rather than a full suit. You can dress sharp and avail of all of the advantages of the manly cut without the formality, while at the same time allowing you to indulge in colors and patterns that you might find a bit overwhelming if it were a full suit. Although we'll be looking at the statement suit more closely in the very near future. Charlie Hunnam is another one of our gentleman gangsters and dressed to the nines. You can't go wrong with a long black overcoat for cold weather. Underneath he reveals a three-piece suit paired with a very tasteful narrow pinstripe shirt and necktie. Even with the mouth of a gangster, dressed like a gentleman, he already has more of our respect than that of Hugh Grant's character, who dresses unexceptionally but with clothes that have a dodgy character woven into their fabrics. The turtleneck sweater and leather jacket is a good look, but Hugh's character has somehow given his a criminal shine. This is, I believe, the start of Hugh Grant's second rise to fame, all with a helping hand from Guy Ritchie. I was never very interested in Hugh Grant before because of all his romantic comedies, but I really am a fan of his recent movies. Mickey, or Matthew, is out in the country and dressed right, ish. He has on a tweed check suit, this time dark green with a red overcheck. The red overcheck allows him to wear that strong coloured cardigan underneath without being too ostentatious. A pinstripe shirt and a green knit necktie and a herringbone cap finish off this look. That look being that of an American trying too hard to look British. Everything he's wearing is an excellent piece of clothing on its own and despite matching the colours and textures, it's all a little bit try hard. It reminds me of that old Coco Chanel saying that upon leaving your house, you should always look in the mirror and take one thing off. Just either lose that hat or necktie and pocket square. That would definitely have improved his look. Dry Eye, played by Henry Golding, is another example of a gangster almost getting it right. He's wearing a solid grey wool overcoat with a statement lapel and a black polo underneath. So far so good, but whoops, that gold pendant swinging around his neck is there because he just can't help showing off his wealth in a clashing unsuitable manner. Swing and a miss. And if you're enjoying this video so far, please hit that like button. It helps bring this video to the attention of other menswear enthusiasts. Thanks. Brown and beige, an excellent combination. Mickey is fond of his tweed, and this time it's a subtle dark brown houndstooth sports coat a matching dark brown long sleeve polo and beige pants. The socks are understated even with the pattern. The soft relaxed look is topped and tailed with the tweed at one end and suede shoes at the other. This time a flawless execution of relaxed grandeur. Meanwhile Ray, Charlie Hunnam, has slipped on something a little more comfortable for Hugh Grant. His tail is obviously taking a little longer than expected. He's outdoors and I don't think I've ever seen wool this thick that wasn't on a sheep that fell over a cliff and went missing for years. I'm not a chunky cardigan person but that looks like it would keep a snowman warm in an arctic storm. This fabulous cardigan is a knit wool from Elgin and it's a snippet at 1,650 euro. Dry Eye is back for a meeting with Mickey, who is dressed spectacularly in a grey check three-piece suit with a brown windowpane overcheck. It has peak lapels, the vest also has lapels. This would suggest that Mickey intends to frequently wear the suit without the jacket. The lapels give the vest a more finished look without the jacket. He pairs it with a light grey shirt and a brown necktie which echoes the suit colours. Matching the pocket square exactly to the tie is a mistake and is kind of a cheap pairing. Anything you can pick up in a box set from Walmart is a style to be avoided. The pocket square can match the necktie but should only pick out minor colours to match it and not replicate it. While I don't own anything as brazen as this suit, I think it looks inspiring and I think I could pull it off. What do you think? Outstanding or just standing out? And then there's Colin Farrell as coach in the most ridiculous tracksuit ever seen on the screen. I have nothing to say about this, literally it leaves me speechless, but his performance is hilarious. Mickey really likes his tweed and I can't blame him. 
He has a fantastic collection of suits and sports coats. This jacket is window pane. It's not quite as busy as a Glencheck, but adds depth to the fabric and allows more color matching when it comes to shirts and ties. It's a warm light brown with a blue window pane, allowing for blue shirt to work with it very well. But Matthew has gone for his favorite, a long sleeve polo and this time a beige one. And he's wearing what looks like dark brown pants. Mickey is very much an earth tone man. Greens, browns and blues, all quite neutral and easy to match. And while we have another brown suit to admire, this time Matthew is using the Italian sartorial theory of spezzato, mixing different elements from different suits together. A jacket and vest from one suit and the pants from another, or perhaps just an odd pair of trousers. This is a great way of extending your wardrobe without spending extra cash. I cover this in more detail in my review of The Mentalist. You can check it out here. He is wearing a lovely soft white shirt, off-white colour and it looks like a cotton linen blend. The necktie looks vintage with a complex pattern in dark green and just as fascinating as the ones we saw in the TV series. And you can check my review of that out here. Ray is out and about with a few of his boys and follows his boss's general style while putting his own stamp on it. A blue button-down shirt, another cardigan with a lapel but thinner this time to fit beneath the padded Macintosh raincoat. It's a real dressed-down semi-formal, a cut above the rest but relaxed and informal at the same time. Not as formal as Mickey but still sharp. His goons are not too badly dressed either. Mickey likes to keep his crew looking serious. This is the first double-breasted jacket we've seen Matthew wear. It's a blue window pane with peak lapels. It's a rule that double-breasted jackets have peak lapels. I've never seen one with a notch lapel and I'd like to see it just to test the theory. Fabric matters when choosing a suit. Apart from fit, it's the most important aspect of any suit. It really guides the feel and the style of the suit much more than the cut. As I covered in my review of The Mentalist, the fabric can really decide whether a suit is going to be a casual suit or a formal suit. Tweed has a lot of texture and texture adds not only interest to the fabric but also makes it feel a little less formal. Mickey is back to his go-to outfit of a long sleeve polo beneath and even with a pocket square he still looks like a gentleman on his day off. But tweed is not just for the countryside. It is long established as a fabric suitable for anywhere including the city. Neither does it have to be the obvious choice of a Czech or a Harris style tweed of blended colours. It can be a solid colour although on close examination it will never be plain, which is its charm. A little known feature of tweed is that it is open weave. This means despite its reputation as outdoor country wear, it is not good insulation against the wind. It's warm, but airy. Unbelievably, I don't own any tweed, but I'm back in Ireland now, I have many options, and I'm going to try and rectify that situation. So what do you think of tweed now that you've seen Matthew McConaughey's fabulous selection of jackets and suits? For the country gentlemen only, or is it a great way to have your cake and eat it formality wise? Matthew's final suit is a dark brown tweed peak lapel two-piece. The light brown pocket square is a nice touch, but will be even better if it contained blue in it to bring attention back to the shirt and tie, and of course to the wearer himself. Not that Mickey is a man you wouldn't pay attention to. I'm really pleased with the community we have here on For the Love of Suits, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit notifications as well, just to make sure you catch the videos. Thank you for watching to the end, and I'll see you in the next video.